Cool. Anyways. Alright. Special features. Let's check it out. Collections. I gotta go see what all of uh, Ada's story I managed to get. I know I skipped two because I was a pussy bitch. You see, I didn't really get a lot in uh, Leon's story. Ton of stuff there. Leon S. Kennedy. At 36 years of age, Leon S. Kennedy is the most respected agent working for the U.S. government. Reporting directly to the president himself, or at least he was, the horrors he witnessed as a result of biohazard outbreak known as the Raccoon City Incident left him with a deep-rooted hatred for bioterrorism and those who would use it. While his demeanor is calm and rational, it should not be mistaken for apathy. He will take the initiative on any mission he's assigned, often putting himself in danger in order to save the innocent. He takes his mission seriously, making decisions cautiously and logically from time to time. However, his sardonic wit will surface, recalling his time as a good-natured rookie cop with a sense of duty he was able to maintain his sense of humor, even in tough times. Yeah, he became something of a badass, didn't he? And there's Ingrid Hunnigan, Leon and the Raccoon City Incident, FOS, which is Field Operations Support, who uh, Leon works for, I think. The zombies. Aleppo Titsa, that's the freaking gigantic titty monster. See, listen to this. Lepotitsa is a victim of the C-Virus, although one that is extremely mutated. The word Lepotitsa, ironically, is derived from the Serbian word uh, for woman of beauty. The creature's body is covered in large pores that secrete a deadly gas. Anyone who inhales its fumes will die and be reanimated as a zombie. And we saw that, didn't we? One creature has the potential to infect an area within a three mile radius. Unlike a traditional zombie infection, which is spread by a zombie's bite or contact with contaminated blood, this creature turns the virus in into an airborne agent, thus creating a contaminant that is harder to avoid. The bioterror attack that Agent Kennedy encountered in Tall Oaks was triggered by this creature. There's the fucking thing itself, look at this. Ugly! <laughs> I got tits on my butt. Guess where else I have tits? <laughs> it's terrible. Somehow I managed to get all the level 5 uh, shits here. Let's see, Derek Simmons. Pretty much he was an aide to the president, but he's a ruthless perfectionist. A personality well disposed uh, to rising in the high e higher echelon of, uh, or enchilon, of uh, power in government. He is the current head of the family, a secret fraternity of power movers and shakers that have manipulated the development of the Western world for centuries. This organization will do whatever is necessary to ensure stability in world order. Fearing the ensuing chaos that would result when President Benford's plan to reveal the truth about the Raccoon City incident, Mr. Simmons orchestrates his own bioterror attack where the president would be one of, but one of many casualties. And it just pretty much talks about Derek's transformations. Russell Plan, JC. Leon and Ada. Oh, hey, I got all this stuff here from level two. That's neat. I didn't think about that. Didn't get anything from for Helena? That blows. <laughs> Damn thing for Chris. Just one. Piers and shit. Chris and Leon. Chris's amnesia. Finn McCauley. Again. There you go. Again, if you want to read these, there's a wiki for that. Look at all the shit I got for Jake. Perfection! Especially look at this. It's, uh... Jake and Sherry as they were in their hospital garb. Look at this. And yet, I still feel terribly wrong. I'm not even gonna attempt to fight until I get a gun. In a minute. Okay, you know, wrong as it, uh, wrong as it was, I... Didn't she not have underwear on? Or at least panties. It's weird. Uh, where's Fuckface? Is this him? I doubt it's him, but... Oh, no, there he is. There he is. Look at this shit. If I ever wanted to draw him, there you go. What's up, Jake? <laughs> nice to see Big Ugly. He has a sense of humor. God damn, look... Look at this fucking mess. So you see, he does, he did have hair because he was at one point human. I think his eye is where his nose is. His nose is where his nostril is. He's got the, uh, what's it called? Nemesis mouth over here. And he actually has two. Look at this. 
Now, when I saw this for the first time, I was kind of hoping that it was uh, him burning so I can get a good look at that because, you know, obviously he was burning and there was high tension at the moment. What's this? It's not his hip. Oh, it's a... I think it's a battery pack for the arm. What the fuck? <laughs> he runs on double A's. A hundred double A's. That's creepy. He laughs at you. <laughs> What is this? I have absolutely no idea. Oh god. It's the street lats, okay. If I never see any of those again, it'll be too soon. This was a this was definitely a very interesting take on the the chainsaw maniac. Uh, there's a fucking face. I think this is after, uh, what's his name? What's her name? Ada blew his head off. Chunk, bloody chunks. See, so he's partially human, but just everything else is just fucked up here. And I'm not sure where his, uh, file is, but check this out. It's organic chainsaw. His heart is there. That's why, uh, when Ada blew his brains out, he didn't die. Because... That's where the heart is. You want to take someone out, you take out the heart. So what do you do? You throw them in a fucking helicopter rotor. <laughs> Life without freedom. Deal with the United States. Ustanak uh, uh, 2, see? Originally a human who had freely injected himself with the C-Virus, his final grotesque form was the result of Neo Umbrella scientists. There you go. I know he had a. I know there was a, a letter he actually wrote in like a diary or some shit before he actually underwent the transformation. Where is it? Where the fuck is it? Lab report. There you go. June tw uh, June 20th, 2011. Finally, at last, I've been chosen. The report came back that my body type is highly compatible with the C virus. No longer will I have this frail, crude body. I will be reborn as a powerful weapon. This chance I will no longer retain my humanity, but it is a paltry sacrifice in light of the wonderful gains. This is what I've dreamed for all of my life. I will be reborn. Oh, Ustinak, I had no idea you were such a poet. See, this pretty much explains that uh, Sherry was detained because uh, he, uh, she, uh, the U.S. government man pretty much feared that uh, if Wester knew about her, uh, he grab a hold, they grab a hold of her and do God only knows what that they haven't already done to her because you know she was pretty much experimented since childhood. But with his death, they pretty much said, "Hey, do what you want, but you want to be an agent? Please don't shoot us." Where's the childhood thing? Hey, look at Uvisto, humanoid form, but its spinal column, rib cage, and heart are all located in its right hand, which itself resembles a monstrous organic chainsaw. Destroy the heart, and Uvisto will die instantly. Immediately, rather. Where's that Jake's childhood one? I can't remember. There we go. Jake's childhood. Jake Mueller was born into a home without a father, and from an early age, he had to support his chronically ill mother. She could have made a full recovery as, as the family could have afforded it, but Jake and Mrs. Mueller had barely enough money to cover their daily needs. She tried her best to provide for the family and did all she could to protect Jake. He loved his mother, but couldn't understand why she was still enamored with his father, the man who had abandoned them. To say Jake didn't think highly of his father would be an understatement. When Jake got older, he decided he would be a mercenary, selling his services to the insurgents fighting the government. He had no love for politics, he just wanted to uh, afford better, better medical care for his mother. Unfortunately, Mrs. Mueller passed away not long after he became a soldier of fortune. Jake felt like he was alone in the world and his heart was now hardened. His only concern was for money, even though he no longer had a pressing need for it. And then, there's Jake Mueller's infamous father. Albert Wesker, father of Jake Mueller, had a very rare, rare uh, physio physiology. His body was highly resistant to viral infection, and he was even able to manipulate the virus he had injected into himself, so he, had, he would only reap the benefits and none of its uh, deleterious effects. This superhuman experimentation gave him abilities that can only, uh, self-experimentation rather, that can only be described as superhuman. As Albert's son, Jake enjoys the same Im immunity to viral infection. When Jake injects himself with a solution contains the C virus, it has no visible effect on him. Albert Wesker planned what would have been the deadliest terror attack, uh, terrorist attack in human history, and he would have succeeded had Chris Redfield and the BSAA not killed him in time. 
Jake has never met his father and knows nothing about the atrocities he committed. He is also unaware of the genetic legacy, the legacy he is uh, heir to. And now, there's Ada. I've obviously looked at some of these things, now it's time to look at everything else. Look at this. Her crossbow with the pipe bomb there. Gotta get out of here before it blows up. She mugged everything. Bloodshot. Oh. I would have expected that to be... I, I never ran into any bloodshots. From Carla's papers. It won't be long before everything he ever feared will come true. My special pet resting beneath the sea will be ready soon. All my little cocoons will also hatch shortly. My greatest creation will be the very undoing of everything he has worked for. It would be a shame, though, if he wasn't ready to live in a world full of nightmares. I'll make his body a living reflection of the horrors I've unleashed. The world will be f so far removed from the stability he craves, it will be complete chaos, and that chaos will destroy his body. And it pretty much did. Oh, Derek and Carla, there you go. Derek Simmons used countless test subjects in his efforts to clone Ada Wong. The main impediment, uh, impediment to those efforts was finding subjects with compatible genetic structure. Using the extensive resources of the family, Derek learned that one of his own researchers, a Carla Radamez, would be a suitable candidate. Derek tricked Carla into taking part of the experiment because she believed Derek valued her and her work too much to risk her. Uh, she was wrong, and Derek succeeded in creating the clone of Ada he had desired. While Carla looked and behaved similar to Ada, there was still a piece of her that remained Carla. Derek's relationship with Ada had only been professional, so he couldn't see that this clone was not the real Ada. Whether through misguided affections or a desire to revenge himself on Ada, he ignored any nagging doubt and began to treat and train Carla as if she were the real Ada Wong. Carla, having lost most of her personality during the experiment, behaved as Derek wanted, but in the depths of her soul there was still a spark of Carla's original self, and once it came to the surface she vowed to destroy Derek, the man who had ruined her life. Complete Mutations after a human is injected with the C virus and turns into Juavo, the virus will continue to mutate the host until its entire body is covered by a tough, cocoon-like structure. Inside this chrysalid, the virus will de uh, dissolve the host's body composition and reform it, thus giving birth to a completely different creature from the Juavo. <clears throat> These creatures are re uh, referred to as complete mutations. Derek C. Simmons sought to harness this mutation process when he tried to recreate Ada Wong, but ended up with a number of failed mutations instead. Lepatitsa and Genezdo are two such examples of those failures. Derek preserved the female aspect, but little else. Oh, so that's why the titty monster and the bee creature were uh, female looking. Especially the bee creature, because you know you remember when, the fir when, when we first saw that in Chris's story? It came out of a dude, but when uh, it came out, I always thought it looked like a feminine feature. That was weird. Derek's researchers soon learned that by mixing the C virus with the DNA of living specimens, they can complete, create complete mutations that preserve the strong features of reptilian and mammalian uh, species. Being able to determine the final outcome for the complete mutation was a key component of creating reliable bioorganic weapons. This research was instrumental in st uh, stabilizing the C virus and creating something that would birth multiple bioweapons. Well, unfortunately, that's all I got. <laughs> Like I said, there's a wiki or more than likely a uh, YouTube video for the rest of it. Ah, shit. No! Cutscenes! Cutscenes! I mean, we already saw them all, but... Still want to have a little reminder of what it looks like. And check out the names of Ada's stories. So, see, pretty much everything takes place. And while this was happening... Jake and Sherry found themselves in the mountains. Fast forward, God only knows how long, to this day, it is in the submarine. Then this day, the Tall Oaks incident. <clears throat> Pretty much continued on to the next day. And here, uh, Ada met with, uh, what's her name, Leon and Helena. Next day, a trip to China. To China, we're going to China. Day after that, we meet up with uh, Jake and Sherry again. I can actually uh, play uh, play through this as Jake and uh, didn't I already play this uh, through this as Jake and unlock this? I thought I did. Oh, well, and during that same day, Chris and the BSAA show up. 
to wreck shit. They team up. They do a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Oh, and while this is happening, Leon and Helena show up. While these guys are facing off against the giant snake, Ustinak shows up. And while Ustinak shows up, Ub uh, Ubistvo is born. This is craziness. It just keeps on going. Ubisto defeated. Their true nature while all this is going crazy. Their skull. Ship. He is demise. Not necessarily. And things just going uh, batshit crazy here. Ada meets her clone. Ada leaves. The zombie apocalypse. These guys meet before a chaos is unleashed. Everything goes batshit here. Someone needs a rescue! The phone's a bind. <laughs> Fucking Derek still isn't dead. What's his name? Uh, Peter's a sacrifice. The final battle against Ustinak. And while all this is happening, it has already settled her accounts. <laughs> and then there's the endings. Trouble with woman. The war isn't over. A promise and a goodbye. And new purpose. So Jake pretty much becomes a fear. If anything, this isn't even Ada's ending. This is pretty much Jake's. Jake 2. <laughs> the developers love you, boy. So yeah. There you go. That's it. I can finally tag a uh, final to the end of this. Because Resident Evil 6 is done. <sighs> Not much more to say, so uh, keep watching One Piece Pirate Warriors, keep watching uh, Secret of Mana 2 slash Seiken Densetsu 3, and everything else I uh, pop up um, between now and, uh, you know, the next year. Hopefully we'll all still be here because the end of the world won't happen. <laughs> and, and at the same time, I'll see you all in January for Devil May Cry DMC. Let's see how many months it takes to finish that one, huh? <laughs> Till then, everybody. Ah, oh, and you know what? Unless I split this, it wasn't an 80, uh, I could, I, it wasn't an even video. So you know what? Splitting this shit, we're going for 80. We've already, uh, we've already surpassed, uh, WWE 12 has the longest slam play ever. I'm not gonna end like this. 80 videos coming up, but not, no more gameplay. We're done. Take care, everybody. This is Alan Sullivan, signing off for Lane Play Theater, Resident Evil 6.